Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. It is October 7th. I would just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on in the bee yard, and that would be pretty much nothing. We did a combine last week. Got another week before I checked that, and that's about it. I check weights and do that kind of stuff, but nothing is going on in the bee yard. So I figured I'd give you an update, kind of a not a conclusion to the season because we still have some stuff to do, but just a few things uh, going on, what we're going to be doing, things that we're uh, planning on doing in the winter, maybe some plans for next year. I don't know. Goldenrod is in full bloom all over the place but we have had no rain and I, I, it's been over three weeks maybe a month it is dry folks dry and so i don't know but we did get a lot of rain was it august and then going into september and then that was it and from what i read goldenrod really needs rain in july and august for it to be plentiful in september and october so maybe the rain did help it i don't know i smelled a hint of it the other day but it don't smell much anymore although the entrances are darkened from the uh pollen coming in there is a lot of pollen coming in let's take a look oh why am i in a jacket well i was just going to walk around and show you the the hives up front and tell you what's going on but i got inspired by bruce's bees bruce from bruce's bees when he just cracked the lids on a few of them so that's all i'm going to do uh so i put a, a jacket and i'm going to wear gloves he didn't wear gloves i'm going to wear gloves I, I just don't like getting stung all up in the hands and I tend to handle my bees a little rough plus I got a few ornery ones let's take a look and see what's going on just in the in the yard in general the bees are really working so here we are this is a mean colony no sense in opening it without smoke it's mean anyway but my little nuke is going good this one here is the is the combine we did and look at the newspaper already all pulled out that's all the old newspaper that's the newspaper on the ground that they pulled out so that combined looks successful as far as getting the paper out and cleaning it just a general glance glance into some of these they sound good lots of bees lots of honey up top they don't like the camera this whole stand is mean this whole stand is mean so we'll move on but yeah a lot of bees in there. Weight wise, these bees are heavy, heavy, heavy. Let's look at this one. This is that little single. This one that was light. This is one of my few singles I gotta feed in the nukes, of course. The bees look good over there. How I check my weights. I grab it back, pick up on it. It's got a little weight to it. I should have known not to empty, open anything on that stand without smoke. That's just a mean bunch of bees over there. This one here, it's a nice looking little single. I don't see a queen on the lid. Just making sure if I put it back together. That's a nice looking little single. But with all those bees, they're gonna eat through everything fast. So we'll get feed on these here in about three weeks maybe. So yeah, that, that stand over there, I probably should have knew better than to even pop the lid on any of them. They're just mean on this stand for whatever reason. Uh, but they got a lot of bees, that's good. I'm sure that one has a lot just by looking at the front and I'm not gonna open this mean. The nuke I know is loaded. So right now the weather is in the, oh it's probably about 85 right now, but those have been the highs. We've been in the upper 50s every morning. And so, as I've told you guys many times, I don't go in the colonies at all once they're settled and they are. All you ever do is see me check the problem children. So where are we at in the season? Well. Everybody's set. Well, I'm not going to go in them anymore except the problem children, which would be the combined and maybe just weigh the singles, check that one nuke again. But they're all set. Again, I don't smell much goldenrod anymore. But they were all queen right. We got all the, all the queens checked out and everybody had a queen and we're laying eggs. Winter bees are going in. Brood is coming out. I mean, there's no reason to go in and take a chance of me damaging a queen this late in the year. I damage queen this late it's all bets are off there's just no reason to do anything but go ahead and combine them and i don't want to do that oh okay i just got a good whiff of oh yeah i got a good whiff of golden rod so that's a good thing of course that could be a lot of pollen too but if they're set with queens and they're heavy and i've treated them which i have i'm gonna leave them alone 
Next thing up for treatment wise, I will hit them with oxalic acid. Remember our hop guard situation? I wasn't pleased with that. So I decided to go ahead and around December. Whoo, smell the goldenrod now. Good. Oh yeah. I love the smell of goldenrod. But I think around end of November, beginning of December, somewhere in there when we get some freezes, or maybe even mid-December, we'll go ahead and blast them with some oxalic acid. But my treatments are done for the most part. I do think the hop guard worked. It just didn't work as effective as I wanted. And the ape of guard definitely worked. So we're going to go back through and uh, do that. You'll notice my colonies aren't blowing up full of bees. And that's because I don't feed them going into the fall because I leave so much honey on them and I run doubles. If I ran singles, like the single back there, I'd have to feed them a lot. Nukes, I'll have to feed. I don't feed going in the fall so i don't build these nests huge we do have nectar coming in a little bit trickling in in around july and august so they were building some i'm smelling goldenrod wow is it strong i love it and uh to me that's just life in the hives when i smell that goldenrod that's why i like the smell but like i was saying um they don't just don't build up because they don't have a big flow and i don't push any one-to-one -one on them because there's so much honey that they'll be fine that they have enough nectar eat to eat they get in dire straits, they'll get into the honey, and then that honey will take them into the winter. So my nests tend to shrink in the summer when the queen slows down. I don't keep her going. And she makes her winter bees, and then I have these more compact, smaller, shut down nests. So I still end up having plenty of strong colonies coming out of winter, and I really don't need them to be loaded, packed full of bees in February because, again, I'm a hobby beekeeper with a full-time job. I I'd love to push the splits as late as I can. So everybody's buzzing along. There's our little nuke that we were concerned with. We'll take a look in there. That's, this is the one we were concerned with that we made more space for them. And see if we got any beetles running around. First thing I do is look at beetles. I don't see any. I got good coverage on the frames. I saw not one beetle. Last time they had them corralled down in a beetle jail that they made. So, they're doing fine. We're out of the woods, I believe, on this. Now, it will have to be fed, no doubt. But let's see how heavy it is now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty light. It's got honey in it, but it wouldn't be a full winter's worth. Oh, that goldenrod smells so good. This one here... there Ooh. oh I forgot to get the strip out of this one we'll get that out pull that strip out they're not happy either I'm gonna pop the bottom I wonder if I even got the strips out at all out of this I jumped over this hive, I think, because it was weak. Oh gosh, it's full of honey, that I can tell you. Oh yeah, see I left those strips down in there. Woo! No smoke, folks. Ow, 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 ow. She got through my glove. All right, let's close them back up, yeah. Well, I guess it's a good thing I got in here. They're not happy. Very angry bees. So I don't know why I've got those strips in there. That means I probably didn't go in there. After I put the second strip in there. Huh. You know why? That was that weak, weak colony. I left it alone. I'm going to have to look at that. And uh, when I look at that combined next week, I'll look at that one. We'll look at it together. Yep. Make sure they're queen right. I'm sure they are. But there's bees in there, no doubt. <laughs> This is uh but this colony I'm actually pleased it's still going. It's got a pretty decent coverage in there. Not not a huge colony. All everything is slid to the left it looks like. Not a lot on the right. See how heavy they are. Yeah, they got a lot of weight in the top. They're good. Obviously, these 
These girls got a rear entrance in a rotten hole and they're guarding their top pretty well. Uh, gosh, it's strong. Well, I'm glad to smell it. Hopefully that's, and I don't see a lot of pollen, so it tells me that's got to be a good amount of nectar and that's a good thing. And that's really great for my singles and my nukes because that, that bulks them up, bulks them up good. That's what we want. That's why I wait till after the flow. We've got plenty of warm weather after the flow. If there is one to just pour the feed to them, but don't look like I'm gonna have to. Let's look in this one. Again, I was just gonna walk and talk, but I saw Bruce popping lids and I thought, hey, that's a good idea, Bruce. Let's see if they... Yeah, not a... That got them going. Not a gigantic colony up top. I've seen better, but I've seen worse. And that's why I wore gloves. Uh, just popping the lids and seeing what they're doing without any smoke. Uh, they tend to get a little ornery. Everybody else is flying and coming and going. Everybody's moving and jumping, so. And we got, we smell the golden rod coming in. We don't have smell of vision so you can't smell it. So again, like I said, not a lot going on in the yard, not planning on doing a lot. So obviously I want to check 13 eh, when I light a smoker. And that'll be when I look at the combined to see if that took. Um, I haven't been in town. Last time I was in there, I had checked Queen Wright colonies and they were good and they were all very heavy. So I'll go by there and just look at the front uh, landing boards. Maybe I'll bring my, my gloves and veil and tool and pop a few lids on some smaller ones. But the ones that didn't look too great here, they when I popped the lids, they didn't look awful inside so that's a good thing next door they're flying heavy um, we'll go take a look but that's it for me folks i mean really there's nothing more for me to do um down here we don't even attempt to mess with a, a a fall flow no reason to heck it's barely enough to feed the bees some years smells like it's doing okay this year plenty of it blooming around as far as the year went it went pretty good so i'm sitting with about I don't know I think I've lost about five or six and that's the ones we went through together a couple dead outs we pulled together in some videos and uh, the one that got robbed out that time so we're doing okay and everybody's flying right now so you know we take a few losses in the fall normally but what I'm seeing looks good for now hopefully that holds out but as far as a year and losses and building and all that um, we did really good this year had a record harvest this year just shy of 3,000 pounds of honey. Just somewhere around 250 gallons, give or take. Um, so it was a really awesome harvest. It was a record setter for me. Never had one that big. Usually I run between 100 and 150 gallons. What I did last year was I began in the videos, as you can see, changing up my management strategies with splits. Instead of walk away splits, which I have no problem with, they're good splits. The brood breaks help with mites, all that good stuff, but what was happening was by the time they make have to make a queen if I had any swarms or I had uh, a split that failed or whatever and I lost a few queens through swarms or something I would be in a jam because I couldn't requeen them fast enough with walk away so what I started doing two years ago was grafting my own learning to graft using some of my cells and buying cells and then last year I used some of my cells and bought cells and that really really bought me a lot of time because when i immediately put sales into a split i'm saving time right there right off the bat you know for a walk away split you're talking about lots of spiders folks um you're talking about at least whew, about one the whole eight weeks before you start seeing brood come out well if i'm doing my splits in march and my flow is my main flow is in may and i get a privet flow in mid-april i'm barely ready for the I'm barely getting a queen back for the flow to start laying for the April flow. And I'm definitely barely getting a workforce back for the main flow. So that if everything works out perfectly, it works great. One or two of the colonies don't make those queens, it doesn't work great. So by putting the cells in, I've already gained two weeks on that whole process. That's how I look at it, and it panned out. Uh, these bees over here seem to be right. That nuke looks a little bit sketchy. Let's look. That thing's booming. I ain't gonna bother it. That was a very weak colony that was building back up. Not sure why this. Ooh, that got a lot of bees off of here going. 
that lid is so warped. Look at that thing. Oh, that nuke is packed. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, maybe they just ain't flying right now. Yeah, they're happy. I guess this is ironweed. As I understand it, that's been blooming as well. That nuke's actually got a lot of weight to it. That's good. What I'll do with the nukes is I got lids with holes and I'll put uh, jar feeders on top of them and that'll take care of those. I'll feed them maybe a gallon through, you know, up to a gallon, three or four quarts, whatever. I put on there of uh, two to one here in another two weeks or so, three weeks, and that'll bulk them right up. And then I've got fondant to supplement anybody that doesn't quite uh, pan out with weight. And, you know, say January, just getting light, throw a fondant on there. This colony here. They're using the side. They're not using the front barely at all. But they're bringing in pollen. Oh, yeah. They're not doing bad. Now, again, you're not going to see gigantic busting, blowing up colonies in my yard. Again, I don't feed them up. But down here... Push comes to shove, I can feed them in the winter. I don't usually do that. Plus, I'm running doubles. I'm leaving a ton of honey in the top doubles. So, really, it's not a huge need for me to feed them into this. And so, that does cause, because we have a dearth of, of sorts, and it goes down before the flow and then goes down into the winter, I'm going to end up with a lot smaller clusters. I mean, golden rods on the back end. Got some native pollinators on it. They just left. I'm seeing what I normally see. Uh, not quite as strong now. Um, I did take a hit during the hop guard a little bit, but um, what I'm seeing right now, it's good enough to get us going uh, into winter. No problem. So you got the bees in my pond. This tree went down in the last big wind event we had. Make sure I don't get snake bit down here. Thirsty bees. I guess thirsty is not the word for it. Anyway, bees taking water back to their colonies. How about that? So let's take a look inside the honey house real quick. Show y'all uh, what we got over the season. So we're kind of packed up in here. Uh, kind of cluttered up. Still haven't went over my honey shelf and put all my stickers on. Just been busy. Got a new job coming now and all that. There's my comb honey. Um, but anywhere I just got buckets stacked, that's all some of the honey. I ended up having to put buckets under the boxes. Um, usually I can stack this whole area with all my honey. Because like I said, it's usually 100, 150 gallons. Last year I think it was 155 gallons. But I stack them alternately on each bucket so you don't push the lid down. You can stack them on top. I've done it. And it will push that lid down. And these type of lids will hold for the most part. Um... But they're really not made for it. I do have some lids that are made to be stacked on top of each other no, ma no matter how heavy they are. But I don't use them. They don't seal good. But I just alternate them like this. That way they don't crush. You can put shelving board across. One by shelving board. Ponderosa pine. Cut it and stack them up. And it's a little better system of stacking. You make more room for yourself. But I'm not stacking hundreds and hundreds of buckets. So I don't, I don't need to. If I had more buckets I'd probably buy some shelving board. And then I could... uh I could do that. So over here on the other side, anywhere where I've got buckets stacked up, except for these empties and those empties, all that's honey. Uh, we got honey back there stacked in the back. So we stack it everywhere we go and we'll start making room as we sell this stuff. We're we'll getting to finally make room and, and have ourselves our honey house back. So again, a record year, a very good year of honey production. You know, ran on average production wise, I'd say 30 colonies. So when I you do my numbers on colonies and what we ran through in the year and what we lost and what we went up and down, some were nukes that we sold, some were nukes that were split off, some were splits that were made into singles and knew we were just going to raise them on up into the winter. You know, so not everything's production. Um, for my yard, it's just, again, a hobby beekeeper. So 
anyway a great year a great year the weather has changed all the tallow leaves are just about off we should start losing all the water oak leaves the humidity is down in the 60s every day we're in the high 50s in the morning so it has been beautiful fall weather for us so hey fall is here the season's over for the most part as far as working the bees there you go that's what I'm doing just walking around giving you an update on where we're at and what we're doing so not a lot to come uh, and then we'll get into some of the tasks that you know beekeeping even though we're done we're not done we're never done right we got boxes with X's those need to be replaced some of those need to be bleach watered and scrubbed bottom boards need to be repaired replaced culling out honey supers I got to fix the handles on the honey supers that have non-standard handles so my hive lifter works better um, got a build boxes we got hive life coming hive life Lord willing I will be there I'm hoping to be there and take some of those great specials Hilco has got some awesome specials on boxes and frames so I'm uh, gonna replace some boxes this year I uh, got a bunch of stuff I'm gonna get from him uh, I have to go look but visit his website at Hilco bees um, yeah looking forward to hive life so we'll get all that equipment get back and we'll be putting boxes together and frames together and a lot of stuff coming up that's just tedious tasks anyhow that's all guys just wanted to give you an update on what is going on now you know where I'm at what I'm doing I hope everybody's doing good I hope y'all's bees are ready to go into winter I hope you guys had a great season as well this is Barry's Best Honey I'm Mike and I'm not doing bees today <laughs> y'all have a wonderful wonderful fall season and may God bless you we'll see y'all later <music>